Please rise and bring a CineQuest welcome to Maverick Spirit Award recipient, Michael Keaton. What an actor, what a talent. Let's start at the very beginning. Um, some of you may already know some of this, but I'd love to hear it from you, Michael. You're the youngest of seven. Yes. You grew up in Pennsylvania. How and when did this acting bug come about? I was a, a big reader as a kid, and I distinctly remember um, reading um, stories, especially anything that was very exciting that had to do with the West or um, 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 war stories or you know, guys breaking out of prison or POW camps, anything that was like really, really, really thrilling and exciting to me as a little kid. And I distinctly remember, not once, not twice, often closing my eyes and trying to imagine what it truly, truly felt like to be there. Like it didn't, I, I couldn't get satisfied just reading it. I had to go like to the next level and see what it was like. And I remember thinking I was a even I was weird. For I, as a kid, I thought, well, this is, I mean, I know you're a little weird, but you're really weird. But I was going to do it, but I did it anyway. You had um, a bout with stand-up, correct? I did. A bout, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it, it's like pneumonia. You had a little bout with uh, <laughs> the goal. It was an outlet, you know. That, that's a very good case of, um, um, I was really smart about that as a, as a kid or as a young guy because I, I thought, I'm not going to sit around and wait. Uh, you know, first of all, nobody was calling me anyway for a job. <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, I kind of can't stand this, and I'm the master of my own destiny, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to start writing like a maniac, and I'm just going to go and get it out somewhere. And the beauty of stand-up for me then was it was my stage. It was my movie. It was my play. It was anything I wanted it to be. So I just went and performed. I never had to ask permission which, you know, for anything. Who were the mentors and supporters who you think helped you to succeed? I don't know that I ever had a mentor as, as such, but I, I know I always took note of uh, people who just kind of knocked me out, and that's a lot of people. G examples that come to mind are Robert Duvall, who's a friend we were just talking about, Robert or Bobby, and I, I've worked with him twice, and um, and Nicole Kinman and Glenn Close. I mean, it's interesting that two people that stick out are, are women, but those three people, what I would learn from them was, was really extraordinary because their discipline and their focus and their work ethic and, and their um, um, attention to detail. Jack Nicholson was, you know, uh, you know, I think at the time or even now there's a, a type, a kind of image that is not as accurate as people think because um, I mean, he was somebody I always admired, and then when I got to meet him and act with him, I was very nervous, but his, uh, his professionalism was pretty extraordinary, you know, and, and, you know, he was so committed to, you know, he just, the thing about him is, you know, that he just, just goes right after it, you know, I mean, this is a guy who played all the great roles, and then he was going to play the Joker, and just, you know, never made a comment about it, never was too cute about it, totally committed to the, to the idea, as we all were, you know, there were, there's no getting around that, you know, you're a big rubber suit, you better commit to it. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the most enjoyable and most memorable experiences you've had in the business? Beetlejuice was just fun because, you know, I, I, I remember once I pulled the trigger, you know, it's like, it's like the way I look at it, you know, once you pull the trigger and the bullet leaves the barrel, there ain't no bringing that guy back, you know. So, <laughs> so that one, you know, that was once I went and showed up, I showed up, uh, Almost, I knew what I was doing, and, and Tim still hadn't expressed what he wanted, and, and still was kind of trying to find it. He, he knew it, but, but couldn't quite put it to words. So finally, after turning it down several times, and finally saying, okay, you know, leave me alone for a couple of days, I'm gonna go think about what I'm gonna do. And then I decided, okay, let's do this. I just started assembling the guy and the thing and the idea and the energy of it in my head. And then next thing I know, I'm in makeup, and I started talking to her about ideas, and I walked on the set, and I remember thinking, man, there ain't no coming back from what I'm about to do, you know. And and, <laughs> <laughs> and there's <laughs> and there's only one way to do it at this point. And if it was wrong, well then we had a whole do a big because they had started shooting the film, they already shot a, a good bit of it. And um, then I showed up, and he just like 
hooked into it and said, yes, that's it. And he said, okay, let me follow that. And, and that was just fun. Your directorial debut, The Merry Gentleman. Yes. I know that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it just screened at Sundance. Originally, you were attached to act only right. and not to direct. Your directorial um, involvement came about through a circuitous way. If you want to tell us a little bit about that and also how you balanced acting and directing. It turns out the, the, the guy, the writer was supposed to direct and then couldn't direct it. And um, uh, I threw my hat in the ring. What I did was actually, I, I, I said, uh, I called the producers and said, are you guys gonna be around on whatever date? And I said, yeah, and I said, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly to Chicago. And they said, really? And they, go, and they hadn't met me or didn't know anything about me. I said, yeah, and I said, uh, you know, just let's let's be between one and two or somewhere. So I showed up, sat down, talked to them, hung out, just talked, asked a lot of questions, and then left. And then I got to uh, the airport. I called them and said, uh, "Hey, I think I might want to direct this thing. I'm going to be in LA in a few hours and think about that." And then it started happening, and it came together and and uh, came together too fast. <laughs> but 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 you know, I, there was no turning back on that either. So we were into it, and I was fully committed and. Uh, it was extremely satisfying, and um, directing myself was—I—I—I I, I, I got to tell you—I I really like directing myself. <laughs> 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 I'd work with me anytime. I did. I did. I, I thought, yeah, man, yeah, I know. You know, that's a good idea. <laughs> 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 this guy's great. Uh, um, well, wh for one thing, the reason I liked it was it saved us a lot of time. I, what's that expression? The uh, the shoemaker's daughter, you know, or or you know, the shoemaker's daughter always has bad shoes or something like that. That that's the problem, you know. You kind of you know watch the scene, and and we didn't have time for many takes for anybody because it was a very low budget and very few days to shoot. So, but you know, you manage your time, and I'd. I'd work and, and you know like Kelly or one of the other actors I'd you know and some of them had done very very little so you really work with them and work with them and work with them and then and then it, then you're up and it's like you know I'd do a take and then go what do you think and they said yeah, yeah, yeah I really love the way you you didn't really hit the mark and so I go okay good I'd do another one and I'd, I'd go you know was I in focus and I go yeah I go let's go you know it was just kind of <laughs> it was just kind of you don't take good enough care of yourself that's the one thing you have to watch after you have to really you keep forgetting, you go, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're in this thing. You know, you're actually going to be on the screen, and a lot of people are going to see it. But um, I, I kind of already, I could short, I could uh, shortcut everything. I could, uh, what, what's that, shorthand everything with myself, because I kind of knew what I was going to do anyway, and as long as I wasn't too far off course, you know. Um, I think certain things, I have a thing now that I'm looking at to do, and I'm not sure I'm going to. I'm in every. I'm in every bit of it, and that might be a. That might be a heavy load. So I don't know about that one. But I, I like that experience. What about writing? You've written a lot in the past, but will you actually write something for? You know, the way I wrote was I wrote mostly comedy, uh, for a group of us that was a comedy group, and then I w w submitted things because I thought I could work in television, working, you know, writing. And I was. I was knew I had to have something going on. You know, I had to have another thing going on. It's actually how Jack Nicholson started. Jack was basically a, a writer. But I, I, I really love directing because, you know, it's just, you can kind of control the situation. And, uh, and it's such, it's the ultimate team sport. I mean, it's yeah. the ultimate team sport. Yeah. There is no greater team sport than that. And I love teams. I was always, I, I, have, yeah. I wish I was on a team now because mm -hmm. you were an athlete. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest feeling, you know, and, and, I, and I always dislike clubs, I must say. Mm -hmm. And I was never, and clubs are different than teams. Right. In fact, some kind of, in some ways, diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. And I was never a good club guy. In fact, they very nicely told my mother that it would be really okay if I never came back to Cub Scout. <laughs> 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 I was not a good Cub Scout. I swear to God, I wasn't. And I dug everything, the idea of it, <laughs> knives and go in the woods and camp and go after animals and stuff like that, make stuff, you know. I was so bad at it. I was just horrible. Every project, I was terrible. Everything, I was bad. Also, we had a very frightening den mother. <laughs> really? Oh, and it smelled. The basement smelled a little bit. That was bad. <laughs> and also, the idea of a den mother <laughs> is so frightening, isn't it? Den mother. <laughs> den mother. Den father is even better than den mother. <laughs> Sounds like a Stephen King book. <laughs> this is why I'm friends with him, because he entertains all the time. <laughs> you said you haven't watched many of the final cups 
cuts of the movies that you've been in. I know as an actress producer, it can be uncomfortable having to watch yourself over and over I again. I had to leave just now. I, <laughs> well, I did because I thought, I can't hear, if I hear something, I know what's going on. Well, Marnie and I were talking and, sh and she said, what, I had never seen Dream Team. What is, what is Dream Team? What's that about? And I started talking about it and I said, oh, it's this movie and, that, and Pete Boyle was in it and Chris Lloyd and I'm talking about, I, I'm, I'm not making this up. And I'm, and I'm not really, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stable. But in the, in the middle, of <laughs> in the, in the in the middle of it, I was explaining to her, and I went, I swear to God, I went, I played that character totally wrong. <laughs> He's I, a perfectionist. I, I did it in '88 or something, and it hit me. I went, shit, I fucked up that character totally. <laughs> and like, oh, and I'm not kidding you. I can tell you now. I could look at it now and go, what was I thinking? You know, so that's why you go, I don't need that. And I'm like, I don't need to make myself that Except crazy. Except for as a director on The Merry Gentleman, yes. you spent hours and hours yeah. in the editing room. How did you handle I know, that? I know, it's really, that's a good, that's, that's a very, I was wondering how I was going to do that. Uh, it's very different for some reason because you really look at yourself as part of the thing in a way. And, and that's another case where you have to stop and go, hey, wait a minute. I, like I was, the, I went through my takes last and uh, you have to go back and go, wait, 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 I, I got to make sure I'm, you know, picking my best takes and I'm good in this thing, you know, it's like, uh, you know, so, so, um, but it, it is different for some reason and I, and I, I wondered how that was going to be and it wasn't that painful. You, you kind of look at, uh, I, I think it's because I knew what I had to do to get done, to get, to make it fit, to make the play, the, 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 the screenplay work and the movie work. So I looked to me, I think like more, part of the part of the puzzle and putting it together I, I don't know it wasn't wasn't that bad I can't quite put my finger on it you have a long history of interesting choices mm -hmm. in terms of the roles that you choose Harrison Ford once told me that if he actually finishes a script yeah then that means he'll probably do the movie <laughs> <laughs> right I would love to be there I would love to be like that but but honestly what is the gem or the thing you look for in terms of character or story um, that compels you to accept an offer? Um, I don't know that I'm always, this is always the wisest thing to do, but uh, if it interests me, or, I mean, I mean, I, mean, I won't lie, there, are, there have been times where I thought, uh, that's probably a smart thing to do right now where you are uh, in terms of, you know, awareness, like this movie will probably be popular, it's not gonna hurt you, the dough's good, just go do that, you're gonna be okay. I definitely have done those. I don't ever wanna act like I've never done those. I'm usually not very good in those. Um, and sometimes I'm okay or I escape them. Um, and I still think they're, they were wise to do in a couple of occasions. So sometimes it's like that, you know, it's, your, it's my business. So sometimes it's business. And then most of the time it's, does this really make me think like, I don't wanna say abject, like all out, full out fear, but does this make me go, whoa, you know, I, yikes, this is a little spooky. I don't know if I can pull this one off. That that will usually wake me up. Otherwise, I tend to get bored and kind of, you know, and they weren't always right, the right thing to do, that's for sure. I've made, you know, choices that were, I, I really don't think about them much afterwards. I just kind of go in my gut and, you know, like I always wanted to, you know, uh, Alan Ark and I were talking one day and, and he said what I always kind of felt, but I guess I never wanted to say, which is, you know, if it's like have a big career and, you know, a, a, a life, or have a big life, and a career. I always wanted to have a life. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, uh, he, she really liked him in Pacific Heights, and it was a dark role. Does he prefer comedy or the more dark material? Um, no. I, I I like, I like it both. I just got done doing a, a comedy and it was really fun just to be back out there, you know. It's, you know, it really, the th great thing about comedy is your brain just doesn't stop. Because just when you think of something, you think, oh, I got a better idea on the next take. And it's really stimulating. I, 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 it's like a nice glass of cold water in a brain that's been kind of uh, atrophied for a while. So that was really fun to do. Has he had an experience of life that's really had a great impact on his work? Um, when I did... Uh, Batman, the first Batman. Um, I'm uh, I'm claustro claustrophobic, you know. I was, uh, I was always uh, my brother would wrestle and fight in my house all the time, like all the time. Somebody was always like getting yelled at for like 
fighting or wrestling around and stuff. And my brothers, I'm the youngest, so my brothers would very often get me, put me in these holds and hold me down. And I was always like a little squirmer. It would drive me crazy when I couldn't move, like crazy, crazy, crazy. And then it made me very, I mean, I'm, I don't want to pin it on them, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not here because that still hit me now, so I don't want to say anything. Um, that, but um, I, so I was claustrophobic, right? Okay, now they're making the suit. Production's going. It's a huge production, and 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 we're trying to. F Tim's running over L London, trying to figure things out, and it, it it was just an enormous thing. And at those in those days, not everything came together. You didn't have all the the, the technological advances to f do stuff and fix it and DI later or to. You didn't have any of that. It had to work there. So they didn't even know if the suit worked, literally. And it, and about for the first few weeks, it didn't totally. We were always improvising. That's why a lot of the shots were dictated on. <laughs> I mean, this stuff makes me laugh a lot. But, 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 you know, like you'd turn a certain way, and all of a sudden the thing would like pop, you know, and you have like a big. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking like a real badass, you know, something goes. <laughs> 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 you know? Oh man, I laughed a lot on that movie. There were so many things that were so demeaning. <laughs> so 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 we get there and we're ready to shoot like the next day. So they go, well, in suit? No, it's not ready to suit. No, it's not ready to suit. Now's the day. I literally had to get into it, and like I had to like squeeze it, but like into it. Like I don't think, honestly, I don't think I've ever been the same since. And I had to do it all day, and you couldn't get out. You couldn't get out. So the second one, they made like a way that if I really, 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 really had to get out, I could get out. So it was in urine for the day. Like, that's it. So you had to be committed. So I kept thinking about this. I thought, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So what, what I did was I thought, there's no getting out of this one. There's no turning back on this thing. So what I did was I took all of that, all of it, and it ended up working really, really great for the character because it really, I always wanted him to be internalized anyway. And then I really wanted them to be internalized. So it just took me really deep, you know, where I had to go into kind of like a state where I thought, I'll go crazy if I have to be wrapped in this thing all day. So what I did is I started to go really, really deep into find kind of place where I could just be in it and like just be right, sit right down in it and just kind of be there for the whole time. Then it worked. Then not only, then it was like a bonus. Then then every time I got into it, I kind of started like, it, it, it started to take me into that kind of really, you know, that, because it was all in here, you know, and, um, the key to the thing that nobody got from that was that the key to that was Bruce Wayne, not Batman. I always knew it was never it was never Batman. It was Bruce Wayne. He's a interesting cat. <laughs> <laughs> if they were to make another Beetlejuice, would he consider it? Yeah, it's the one thing I thought would be fun to do again, but 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 no one's ever come up with a good I enough idea, you know. Who would I rather work with in the future, Tarantino or Soderbergh? And I played the same character in two different movies. Um, and how did that come about, right? This is great, because um, the first one was Jackie Brown, which is a really, really good movie. And he's absolutely original, Tarantino, and absolutely unique, and, and really fun to work with, and great. And like a lot of things I do, I, didn't, I turned it down many times. And, uh, I don't. I term. I don't know why that is, but I do it almost everything. I say, nah, I don't think so. And then they come to go. Well, I think you should. No, and it goes on for weeks. And then finally, I go, okay. So that was one of those. And mostly that happened under the influence. Boy, I hate to say this, young guy here. This is not a good idea. But under the influence of a lot of Jägermeister. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that's the stupidest liquid. There's no reason for it. It's like Jägermeister. You know, even if I was in a fraternity, I wouldn't drink Jägermeister. It's like stupid. But what happened was he gets me into this place. He goes, "Come on, man, maybe down. Yeah, okay, right, right, maybe down thing." He's Quentin Tarantino. I go, "Okay," and I, you know, I loved what he did. So we go and that, you know, now I go, "Whoa, how did this happen?" You know, and like hours now in this bar with him and. Uh, by that time, I kind of thought I'd do it anyway because I thought, yeah, I probably shouldn't turn working down with Tarantino. So I did that, and I really liked it and liked the character and liked the, liked the role a lot. That's it. Story ends and movie's over and all that. And uh, some time goes by, and Soderbergh, who I'd known e before, who I always loved. In fact, if you've never seen King of the Hill, you should get King of the Hill, which is maybe Soder one of Soderbergh's great, greatest movies. Um, he... he, uh, he starts talking to me, calls me and asks me about doing uh, 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 Ray Nicolette, who is the character from Jackie Brown, who is an Elmore Leonard character, right? Shows up in some of his books. 
so I go, I was immediately intrigued because I like uh, Stephen a lot. I think he's tremendous. And um, I just, the conditions were, okay, here, if we do it, here's how we do it. I have to look a little bit, uh, enough like the other guy to recreate the look enough that you, you kind of identify, just go, boom, there's that guy. That's, that's him. That's him because what I liked, the, the idea, and, and that it, it wasn't a joke. It wasn't like I didn't look stupid and the character didn't look stupid. Those, those are the only conditions. Besides that, you know, where do you want me to show up? Let's go do this. This will be fun. So he said, right, no, 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 no. It's going to be cool. It's going to be like, and what I thought was cool was, and no one's ever done this, and it's what made me do it. I thought, well, I don't think anybody's ever done this. A an actual, you get the feeling the guy's out there walking around in the world, like he exists, you know what I mean? Because he just shows up in another movie, another studio, <laughs> another, you know, like a whole other story. And all of a sudden he was like, you know, he could show up like next week in something. He's in a Will Ferrell movie, you know? It's like, he exists, he's out there. I just thought that was so cool, such a cool idea, and I never seen it done before, so I thought I should do it for that reason alone. And, he, and Ray Nicolette is actually a pretty interesting character, and I was told whether it's true or not that uh, Elmore Leonard really liked that I, what I did with, with, with it, but um, that's, that's how that happened. The, uh, are there, I play comedy and drama. Are there any similarities? In play? You know the similarity is? You just tell the truth. You just tell the uh, truth, you know? Like, like, you know, no one tells the truth better than guys like Alan Arkin, you know? <laughs> you, when you think about what he's doing, or like Will Ferrell is so committed to, but if you listen to read the words, it says one thing, but he is so committed to what he does, the insanity of it, and takes it out there, but he never backs off the truth of it, which I really like. So, like that, you know, you just always have to tell the truth. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Doll. That was great. I know. And now, we're going to present the award that represents the spirit of Cynic West, the Maverick spirit, which is what we serve, the artists and innovators who are original, who do something that comes from the heart, from the soul, from their identity, not from a marketing plan or a formula. And now the award was created by artist Carlos Perez, and it is a bronze film canister and a hand-blown glass lightning bolt representing innovation striking film. And I'm very honored on behalf of the board of directors and the staff and the many filmmakers of CineQuest this year and before to present this award to Michael Keaton. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you.